Aloha, and welcome to the Honolulu Museum of Art Family Sunday. My name is Sue Francis, and I'm a docent at the museum. Today, it's my pleasure to share this book with you about an artist I think you'll enjoy. The title is A Life Made by Hand, the story of Ruth Asawa. It's written and illustrated by Andrea Bettino. Let's get started. This is the story of an artist you may never have heard of. Her name is Ruth Asawa. She was born in California and her whole family worked on a farm. Working with her hands was an ordinary thing to do. It was what all the hardworking people around her did. But Ruth was no ordinary person. Ruth looked carefully at everything around her. What kind of plant are you? She wondered. What a fascinating shape your shell is, snail. What delicate and beautiful wings you have, my friend. Hello, spider. How did you figure out how to make your web? Ruth liked to look at the drops of water in her garden. She often stopped to notice how the light shone through their delicate shape. Her hands were always busy making things out of anything she could find. She made tiny animals out of the wire she found around the farm. She created shapes by folding paper. Do you ever make shapes with paper? She loved to draw forms in the dirt with her bare feet. Do you do that sometimes? Maybe at the beach in the sand. On Saturdays, Ruth got a break from busy farm work. Her parents sent her to Japanese school where she was given lessons in calligraphy. Do you know what calligraphy is? Yes, it's a way of writing, like you see here, using characters. She learned to hold the paintbrush and shape the bold characters with black ink. When Ruth was older, she continued to study art. She went to Black Mountain College, an unusual school filled with brilliant people. People like choreographer Merce Cunningham, who made shapes in the air with dancers' bodies. Look at all the different shapes. What shapes can you make with your body? And one of her most inventive teachers, Buckminster Fuller, who was always busy coming up with new ideas to make our planet a better place to live. He was a scientist, an inventor, a designer, a mathematician, and also a philosopher and a writer. He did a lot. Joseph Albers taught students to make art out of everything around them. Leaves, paper, wire, clay, even garbage. Don't throw it away. Just look at it in a new way. He became famous for his square color paintings. At the museum, you will see one of the famous color squares by Joseph Albers in a gallery upstairs. Ruth was eager to learn from interesting people around her. On a trip to Mexico, a local craftsman taught her how to weave with wire, looping it around and around to make baskets. When Ruth got back home, she experimented with wire. She was so excited to discover that a line can go anywhere. In Ruth's hands, simple wire turned into graceful sculptures that were light as air. Ruth continued to weave all day, even when she had a family of her own around her. Her hands never stopped moving as she looped and looped over and over again. 
now it was time for other people to look closely and wonder, how did she make that? I think it defies gravity. Is it some kind of sea creature? Maybe something from outer space. What do you think it looks like? The one thing everyone knew was that her sculptures were beautiful. People go to see Ruth's art in museums all around the world. You can too. When you come to the Honolulu Museum of Art, you will see sculptures, wire sculptures by another artist, Alexander Calder. And look for how artists have made things by hand using things like pieces of wood and string and even coconuts and paper and photographs, all kinds of things to make beautiful works of art. And don't forget to make your own artwork. What can you use to make a painting or a sculpture? Ruth has always said, sculpture is like farming. If you just keep at it, you can get a lot done. Thank you for joining us today. And happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. I look forward to seeing you all at the museum. Aloha.